Dr. Zivadnov, thank you uh, very much for bringing some new insight into the initial research done by Dr. Zamboni and uh, for sharing a great deal of information with the uh, group as a total. I'm wondering, uh, we're running a little short of time, but maybe you could just very briefly summarize what you believe we know or can conclude from the research that you've done uh, so far and what you believe that other researchers uh, who build off your work need to learn in order to determine uh, what the suggested relationship between CCSVI and, uh, and the process in MS. I think there are, you know, three fundamental steps that have to be in phases undertaken uh, regarding this research. The first one is to determine uh, how this phenomenon or association or condition or whatever you want to call it is real. In order to do that, we need to determine what's the best diagnostic tool to determine this condition. Is it Doppler, as Professor Zamboni is suggesting, I think the Doppler clearly has advantages respect to the other static techniques because it's dynamic in its nature. You can move the patient between the supine and upright very quickly and get a lot of answers that you can't do with a more static examination like is MRI and others. We are proceeding also with some more advanced uh, uh, diagnostic uh, uh, tests, probably only at experimental basis. These are intraluminal uh, ultrasounds and OCTs uh, that we will perform in our, in, in our pilot studies. Uh, second, we will clearly, based on that, uh, determine whether selective venography is gold standard or really a non-invasive exam, which we just published recently, was very, very, very predictive of what has been found on selective venography. Uh, second point will be that many other groups in the world uh, will be able to reproduce these results if these results are really present in uh, uh, patients with MS. And then the question is whether it's 100, 56, 26, I don't know. What we found was the best of our abilities in the best blinded study we could have organized at University of Buffalo. And the other researchers will tell clearly their point. The second step is to determine whether there is some correlation between the CCSVI and MRI and clinical outcomes so important for this disease. We have started the pilot work. Uh, we are extending this work in the CTVD study uh, on almost 500 subjects. And I think that from our work, important data will come as well as from the other research groups in the world. We need to understand, is it just an epiphenomenon or if there is a difference between 38% in CIS patients and 90% in secondary progressive patients, uh, does the CCSVI happen as a collateral of the disease or uh, there is some more important connection? The third step is <clears throat> clearly once we determine the first two steps is to determine whether pilot safety approaches uh, may show to be beneficial and uh, uh, I think that uh, based on what is known from the patient case reports as well as some uh, uh, more uh, rigorous studies that have been done with clearly COVID not being blinded and controlled, we, uh, I see two different ways how this research will go. One, we clearly need to use well-established MRI and clinical outcomes like we are doing the phase two, phase one, and phase three clinical trials uh, in a blinded control fashion uh, where there we can show uh, that this is useful as a disease-modifying approach. Number two, we can't ignore the symptomatology effect, whether it's a placebo or it's something more, I think that symptomatology studies also have to be taken into account and show whether this might be useful because we really care about the quality of life of patients. And uh, I can say just for patients we sent 
to treatment to Dr. Zamboni that most of them uh, uh, said that they can dream again uh, and really dream again, literally dream again after the procedure. The night after the procedure, people who had not dreamed for so long, uh, many years, had dreams, didn't have headache, uh, had much less fatigue. So clearly, we didn't design even our study to measure these points because that, that was really not the, the, the point that we wanted to assess in this pilot study. But clearly, the science will go here. In terms of the design of the trials, uh, I think that uh, along will be the debated what, what's the best and uh, what has to be done. Uh, and I will limit myself to, to these three important points. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and now I'd like to call Dr.